Okay, it looks like it finally arrived. And, um, I think this is our speaker. We'll check this out. Okay, VX1ST, and I guess this is the top, and we got a razor blade here, let's just see what these speakers look like, oh, another box, okay, there we go, look at that. These are supposed to have an impedance of about 4 ohms. These are driven by a coil. Oh, look at that. Okay. Looks like they come with a couple capacitors. Oh, fancy dancy little sticker, which... I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Two point two to twenty kilohertz, hundred and one dB, two hundred and forty watts, four ohms. Okay. And I guess you can mount those in your car or whatever. It's not what I'll be dealing with them. Wow, these things are heavy. Solid metal. Yeah. Holy cow, looks almost like a jet engine. Got some kind of moaning ring. Of course, there's always a plus and minus. I think you're supposed to drive these with the appropriate polarity. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? We'll have to do some testing with this. There's some mad science experiments I want to do. Let's see how this thing works. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, test out the uh, frequency response. I have, um, of these uh, speakers, I have, they should be identical or similar. So um, we don't have to worry about the detector being different than the... Um, speaker it should be just like the transfer function squared and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start our signal generator at 10 kilohertz and uh, slowly sweep it up and I will count out the frequencies as I'm sweeping so we can see create like a little spectrum graph on, on uh, our uh, scope here of what's going on and so there's 10 kilohertz, and I'll slowly bring it up. 11, 12, 13, 17, 18, 20, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30. Uh, maybe I went too fast. Let me just stop it again. Okay. I'll go a little bit slower so we can uh, get a better spectrum of it. Okay. I guess I have it on a very slow time scale. <clears throat> so just kind of get the idea of the frequency response of this, this uh, device. Okay, for some reason the scope turned off. Okay, I'll set it to uh, 10K and we will Turn it on. Okay. We'll go up to 11K. 12 kilohertz. 
13 kilohertz, 14, 15 kilohertz, 16 kilohertz, 17 kilohertz, 18 kilohertz, looks like it's cut off by there, 20 kilohertz, completely cut off, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, looks like 31, there's a resonance there, 32, 33, Okay, 38, 39, 40, okay. And uh, 44, 50, uh, and I'm not seeing anything above that really. So it looks like it goes up to, I don't know, what do they say, 18 kilohertz or so. And then the frequency response kind of shuts off after that point. Okay, so I'm up at 100 kilohertz, 115 kilohertz. And I'm not really seeing anything. Okay. And the scope turns off again. Okay, so there's our frequency spec uh, spectrum, and it cuts off at about 18 kilohertz. And look at a view. There's what the speaker looks like. Okay. They're actually kind of heavy. They're made out of solid aluminum. So we'll have to see, um, since these are coil speakers, it will... Uh, Stupid scope keeps on shutting off. Uh, we'll be able to drive it more simply with a single FET. So we'll have to test that out. Okay, okay let me do one more frequency response curve because it says that the, uh, the speakers go down to 1 kilohertz. And uh, so we'll start at 1 kilohertz up here. And we'll go up to 10, so we'll do the lower range. There's 1. There's two. So at two, it starts to kick in. There's a three. It has kind of a response there, and then it goes down a little bit. There's four. And it gets, it has a very high resonance at four. It looks like it goes almost off scale. And there's five kilohertz. And then it drops back down again at six. And there's seven. Looks like it's picking up again. Oh, this stupid scope. Okay, we'll start back at five. There's five. I'm just kind of looking at the relative response. Uh, we're at six. It seems like it kind of drops down at six. And uh, there's seven kilohertz. And eight kilohertz. Okay, so it seems to pick back up around eight. There's nine kilohertz. And 10 and 11. Okay. Sweep back down quickly through the frequencies. There's 8. Again, it has more of a resonance there. And it has a very strong output, about 4 kilohertz. Okay. So there we go. There's a frequency response of this guy at the lower range also. Okay. Again, I 
have the speakers back to back so that uh, they should have the same transfer function, sending and receiving. Okay. okay, let's do some calculations. This is the speaker box and it says that the speaker is about 4 ohms. Of course, that's frequency dependent because uh, it's an inductor in there and those are always frequency dependent. But we'll just use that as an approximation. It's probably got some resistance in there too, so maybe it's about 4 ohms. And the RMS power is 120 watts, and the peak power is 240 watts. Okay, and so let's do some calculations. Remember, power equals uh, V squared over R. And so if we hook it up to a 12 volt battery, 12 volts times 12 volts, uh, divide. <laughs> divided by 4 ohms is equal to 36 watts. Okay, so one 12 volt battery will put about 36 watts through the speaker. And if we do two 12 volt batteries, 24 times 24 divided by 4, 144, that's, so that's going to go above the RMS value, but it'll be below the max power. So. 2 is probably about the limit of what we should do. Let's try doing 3. How about that? Let's see what 3 says. 36 times 36 divided by 4. 324, so that's definitely above the power level. So we, we don't want to put 36 volts in there. So 24 is probably the most power we want to stick into this guy. Uh, so maybe we'll test it with 12 volts and see how this thing works and then bump up the power to two batteries, 24 volts, and see how much power we can put through this uh, speaker element here. It says the diaphragm is made out of a one-inch titanium diaphragm. Well, very interesting, huh? Okay, here's our setup. And uh, this is a FET driver. I talk about this in um, one of my videos. I believe it's um, how to stop a FET for bringing. And I have a uh, FET driver driving a FET and the FET is powered by just one battery right now and of course I have the FET driver powered by the same battery and all we have to do is make this final connection here okay and we'll see how loud this thing is this is just one battery and that's at 12 kilohertz and that is very loud Okay, shall we try to go up to two batteries and see how loud it is? I think that might be overdriving it. Yeah, two batteries seems to be a little bit too much for it. It seems like it's uh, distorting the signal. Okay. Oh, maybe I didn't have, I turned up the driver a little bit on the FET. Yeah, that's a lot. We needed more power into the FET driver. I just turned up the voltage on that. Now it is really out the power here. I, I'm wearing earplugs because I don't want to hear this. This is really super noisy. Okay. That's just one battery. Okay. They weren't kidding, that is super loud. Anyway, I don't have a way to calibrate how much sound's coming out of it, but uh, that's uh, pretty intense. Anyway, we'll, we'll be doing some interesting experiments with this. And uh, this is uh, Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.